What is up, party people? Welcome to Saturdays and Seltzers. My name is Kendra Middleton. I am joined by my co-host, Sarah Griffin. Sarah, how are we doing? Pretty good. You know, live the dream, as always. I know. Sarah just told me that she's not feeling too hot, so I feel super bad. I'm thinking it's strep throat. I usually get at least once a year. I woke up this morning and I just felt like shit. And it's like all the symptoms. So it's probably that time. It's just weird because it's like not even cold outside yet. I know. I always get strep and I always get the flu once a year. So I guess I I'm usually get really. Yeah, I usually get strep once. I usually don't get the flu, but I'm probably going to get it because I just said that. So whatever. Yeah, um, I always get it. Yeah. So if you're new here, we do a segment to kick off our show every week called our HLH, which is our high of our last week of our low of our last week and our hero of last week. Um, usually we just go like all in order, but I think that we should switch it up because we wind up talking about each other's at the same time anyway. So <laughs> what was your high last week? Uh, my high was, I guess just last weekend. I had a good weekend. I Obviously, it's a long weekend, but so I forget. I went home Friday night, so I got to see Freddie and my sister, which was good. Saturday, I was at Gillette all day, and then I went out after that, which was nice. And then Sunday, I actually went out too, which I never really go out more than once a weekend. So Ooh. that was fun. It was, it was a wild weekend for me. <laughs> Where did you go out Sunday? Um, we just kind of hopped around Boston because I went with Colleen, my roommate, and then met up with my friends like Maggie and all them. Nice. Um, my high last week, I got, okay. My high and my lower kind of related. Like, so <laughs> I'm sure that you saw this, but for people who have seen me talk about it and don't really know what happened, I showed up to move in at noon last week and the prior tenant was still in my apartment, like had nothing packed, like was just chilling in my apartment and I like knocked on the door and I was like hey and he was like oh hey what's up and I was like so I kind of live here now <laughs> and he was like yeah I'll be out in like half an hour and I was like yeah bullshit buddy because yeah. nothing was packed like his furniture was everywhere like nothing was in a box like not at all and so we wait like half an hour and he's carrying out like a basketball and a tennis racket at a time. And yeah, it was ridiculous. And I got my keys at noon, which he just handed me like the landlord wasn't even there and had to have my truck back at one. And my friends could help me for like two hours on their lunch hour from work. Cause it was like a random Thursday and it took him like hours to get out and he didn't even move out. He just put all of his crap in our front yard and just came to grab it over like the next few days and the apartment was disgusting like I am still cleaning it like I have barely unpacked like my furniture all got delayed like I built that this morning like mm -hmm. and now I'm scared that all my furniture is going to show up like while I'm in DC this weekend so I'm like low-key freaking out um but so like, that's kind of my low, but my high is that I'm at least like moved in and nobody died. Like I didn't wreck the U-Haul. Yeah. Like I'm at least here. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't realize he, <laughs> that is so bizarre. That's so, he... so bizarre. I guess some people are more like not as much planners, but like moving's moving. You have to prepare for that. Like you cannot just day of yeah. like, oh yeah, shove everything out there. That's yeah crazy. and he literally just put it in the fucking yard <laughs> Ooh. and then he was like yeah maybe we could like play xbox sometime or something I'll like tune into your stream I was just like please don't <laughs> yeah like we're not friends no he was like I could like you know Venmo you for something I was like my landlord's gonna like back pay whatever this is going to cost to get this truck back late so whatever pal <laughs> yeah so that was my low. What was your low? <laughs> um, I have two lows. One is school started for me this week. So I think that's another reason I might already be sick. So that's my other low is just being sick. I feel like one, having so much more extra to do. And then two, just anytime going back to school, I feel like everyone always ends up getting sick. So 
yeah that's probably and then it's just like back to sleeping like two hours so that's not great but we'll see this is your last semester right no no ah that I can't believe you went back to school I know I really <laughs> well okay yeah I feel like the last time I knew you like weren't gonna go back I really didn't want to but at that I feel like once I'm like in on something I'm like all right I just want to stick through with it like whatever I can power through I think I'm just like too stubborn at this point <laughs> yeah it's true and it'll be nice when you're done you know it's like a couple years of yeah. your life and you'll have it for the rest so yeah all right all right um, what was your hero? Well, is your hero? Um, my hero is I'm going down the Cape this weekend to see my Nana for a couple of days. I haven't seen her in a while. Anytime I've seen her, it's been for like a couple hours. So it'll be nice to see her for more than like two hours at a time. Cause she's an angel and I love her. Oh, cute. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, my hero, I'm going on vacation ish this weekend. Like, yeah, I'm working, making content, like that kind of stuff. But like, if my job is to like go drink beer and make content and I'm hanging out with Tyler because Tyler's coming for the whole weekend. Um, I'm like all my, I know some of my childhood friends are going. Some of my college friends, um, like my, like one of my lifelong best friends is going and then my friend Haley's coming with me. So it's like, we have like a crew of like 40 people, but like I get to see Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the Jags are going to beat the commanders. <laughs> Great weekend on deck. Yeah, we're, we're truly thriving. We're going to have a good weekend. Um, all right, cool. I feel like that was a good HLH this week. It was very wholesome yeah. other than my moving experience and you being sick. Um, oh, and Jackson has a fenced in yard now, which has been awesome. Like oh, life changing. Oh my gosh. I just literally can open up the back door and he just does his thing. Although there is a dead rat on my porch and I don't really know how to deal with it. And it's like decaying. Oh, I know I was with my friend Caitlin the other day and it was raining and I was like gonna go clean this rat up off my porch and she was like you should at least let it dry out I'd rather pick up a dry dead rat than a wet dead rat and I was like oh my god like a wet rat is like my biggest fucking yeah, unlocked I, fear now oh disgusting I like I didn't even think about that but like I'm so glad that I did now that's so gross <laughs> <laughs> um so there's that but I wanted to talk about the U.S. Open for a minute because I have watched every single second of it like it has been on the TV while I've been unpacking working like whatever it's honestly like a very soothing sport to work to because you don't have to pay a ton of attention to it mm -hmm. uh, and to, unless it's like a certain point so yeah I've watched I only watched it. Serena that's all I watched yeah so I wanted to talk about Serena um what a freaking career what a woman like if you are anyone who enjoys anything in life I feel like you love Serena Williams but like if you're a woman you enjoy Serena Williams and if you're a woman in sports holy cannoli like I feel like Serena Williams is my childhood I saw a tweet that was like it's a tough week for women in sports tweet Serena Williams and Sue Bird <laughs> I know yeah and it's like I didn't watch a ton of women's basketball, but I always watched a ton of tennis. Not that I'm like super into tennis. I just feel like it was one of those things that like my family always just had on. Um, mm -hmm. And so like, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of sad. Like I'm, I'm really sad. This is like the first, like a lot of retirements have been like weird. Like when Peyton Manning retired, I remember being like, wow, holy crap, whatever. Um, but like, this is the first one that I feel like I really deeply am like upset about. Mm hmm I know I don't watch a ton of tennis, but like everyone else, obviously, if Serena Williams is on your TV, you're going to watch her. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been like really like just kind of like mourning that this week, weirdly. Um, also, did you see the clip? I'm sure you did, because I think everyone shared it of Saquon Barkley watching her match. <laughs> that was good. She that had a really lot of funny. stars out there for her. I know I heard I was watching the broadcast and they were saying that there were celebrities like fighting trying to get into boxes really I mean I don't doubt it I know I feel like there's been a lot of celebrity drama this week we we're going to talk about the Harry Styles Chris Pine stuff later on but there's been like a lot of celebrity stuff going on I feel like it's been a good mm -hmm. week of drama um and then I just quickly wanted to mention that Francis Tiafo is the first 
African American from the US to reach a US Open semifinal since Arthur Ashe in 1972. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been a really cool storyline. I mean, like this US Open is just so weird because like all of these huge names on the men's and the women's side either have been eliminated or are injured or what have you like even Coco Goff was eliminated the other night um and that was a really good match as well but it's like there's so many either people who have been in tennis for a while and kind of are having like a second leg of their career that could win the U.S. Open or just kind of like new faces so that's I think it's been a really mm -hmm. exciting tournament um so I'm excited to watch the end of it we have a couple MLB notes I saw you had a White Sox note in here well, no. So did you see this? There was at the Red no, Sox. No, I have no idea. It was okay. So it was the Red Sox are playing in in Tampa or I don't know what the deal. They're playing Tampa. I know that. I can't remember if it was home or away. I was watching. I just saw this on social because it kept popping up. But so Tristan Casas hit his first career MLB home run. A guy caught it. He was wearing a Rays jersey. And they went because obviously they want like he wants the ball like Costas wants his first MLB home run ball. Yeah, the guy was like, "Oh, like I'm not even a Rays fan. Like I'm just a White Sox fan. I'm here. Like whatever." And I guess it's like refusing to give up the ball. That was the original story, at least. And then like they end up having to give him. I think it was a Bogart signed ball or jersey, and then maybe Devers, and then someone else. But they asked him about it. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm getting, like, Bogart's autograph, Devers' autograph, and some other guy I don't know. Like, just, like, a very bizarre interview. And then Costas did end up getting the home run ball. Then the guy's like, I'm not, like, I just got these tickets. I don't even know why I'm here. I'm a White Sox fan. Obviously, the White Sox are not playing. They're like, okay. Like, so confused as to why you even want half these things, why you're here. And then I guess after, later on, he was like, oh, no, like, they, like, fun it like that's not the case I was waiting to walk it down to the dugout myself or something or waiting for someone to come like and bring me there like I was going to give it to him regardless I didn't need any free stuff it's just a very weird story <laughs> I didn't see any of this but I'm also so out on the baseball season it's not even funny I just like I feel like I have so many like Red Sox people that I you still do. follow that it's yeah. like was in my entire timeline. I don't watch any of the games. So I was like, what are they talking about? That's and then I so saw the clip. funny. It was weird. I kind of love that though. Like, is that fucked up? Like, I kind of love that guy. Like, I'm oh, no. just like, 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 this is the highlight of the Red Sox season. Like, that's the funniest <laughs> thing to happen all year. <laughs> like, that's kind of epic. Like, I think that that's fucking funny. <laughs> Someone was, there was some meme. It was like, Xander probably signed the ball. I was like, fuck you, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> just the way that he like tried to like, I don't know, like play the victim at the end, like is kind of awesome too. It's like, yeah, I was gonna be like this hero anyway, but now I'm just like <laughs> and then the fact he know. didn't even like either of the teams involved. I know that's even better. The fact that he's a White Sox fan is fucking even better. Like that's just like, showed why. up there. He literally made it sound like he like stumbled into the game somehow. It was so weird. <laughs> yeah, I blacked out in transition. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I say that I'm over the baseball season and I only put one baseball thing in our notes, but I did put something in our notes and I just said Bobby Dahlbeck, LOL. Yeah, that's, that's tough. I mean, it was overdue, especially because everyone's been waiting for Casa to be called up. You knew it was coming. I think we've been saying it all season. And honestly, I think a lot of last season too, like he needs well, I said it all last a. year. Yeah. He needs time in AAA. So, and I think he hit a home run already last night in Worcester. So. Yeah, I think one of our, yeah, I think one of our first shows ever, I was like saying that Bobby needed to be sent down and that's how we got on to our whole throbby Dahlbeck situation. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, whatever. I, I think it, I, I think that he needs it. I think that he needed it a lot sooner and I'm hoping that it, who knows, Bobby's career could turn around, but probably. I'm like, I'm guessing with Casas up now, this is kind of the end of yeah. Bobby's time with the Red Sox anyways. Yeah. After this and season. I don't. And I don't really see him going anywhere else in the majors. Like, I don't, he just, he doesn't, Maybe I don't like, know. Cause he's from Arizona and Diamondbacks could use someone like that. Like, a, like losing team. And I'm like, if he has to go back home, like whatever, like all this stuff. I'm like, I think he could make an impact on our roster. It's just, I don't think someone that's still struggling at the major level should be playing in the Boston market, especially when he was the one holding out so 
like so long this spot from Casas, who is the future of the first base there anyways. Yeah, it's like, I think the first base is one of those positions that someone should be able to play at least competently and he cannot. And mm-hmm. the only kind of flashes of life that we saw of his bat were like what August of last year when he was hitting all those home runs. I mean, I think he led the league in home runs for the month of August last year. So it's like, yeah, if that, if that at least had kept up, like it, it, it might make up for it, you know? And they've, mm-hmm. the thing is, is that it's not like they're just giving up on the kid. Like they've had him play multiple positions. Now he was at least, he, I think he was playing DH at one point in August last year. He was in um, spring training this year. Like they gave him chances. And like, it's not like they've had a swimming season. Cause I know he was like, he grew up playing third or I think he grew up actually playing pitcher, but like in college, he was a third baseman. And obviously that position is Devers, but because they have had this losing season, Devers like was injured and stuff like he's playing for good third base. So like he's had his chances all around the diamond. Like, like you said, he's been DH a couple of times because JD hasn't looked stellar this season either. I just think he, if anything, needs a fresh start out of the Red Sox organization. Yeah. I think that that would be good for him. Um, once again, that was us talking baseball. <laughs> Uh, I have a couple football notes just because college football started last week and the NFL starts tonight. I know that this is coming out on Saturday. So if our takes are wrong, oh, well, get over it. We're going to be wrong probably a lot. (laughs) Um, College football last week was awesome. I had a great time watching the games. I had some friends in town. I had three different groups of friends in town and I was like hopping around trying to kind of see everyone and unpack and like deal with all of that. Um, But the Oregon Georgia game. I'm so relieved that Bo Nix is what Auburn fans thought he would be. I think I made it, I made a joke on Twitter saying that like, imagine being Bo Nix and transferring out of the sec thinking you don't have to play Georgia's defense anymore. And then having to play Georgia's defense again, but I think that George is going to be fine. I think a lot of people had them kind of moving down in the rankings because they lost so many of their defensive starters to the NFL. But I honestly think that they could repeat a national championship this year. Um, the Iowa game was so much fun. Florida upset number seven, Utah. They were previously not ranked. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this and it might be just because I grew up a Gator fan, but there are so many fucking Gator fans up here. Are there? Uh, yeah, I haven't noticed. There's so many, I swear. I went to like a couple of different bars last weekend and there were Florida fans everywhere, like more than any other school. It was wild. Interesting. Yeah, because, like, I'm used to that from, like, growing up and stuff, um, but it was just wild up here. Um, I think NC State is also overrated. They got almost upset by ECU. I think they won by a point because of, like, a missed field goal, which was nuts. Um, I quickly wanted to talk about the AP poll really quick. I think that Michigan and Clemson are both so overranked this week because they're sitting at four and five I think Clemson is a fake good team right now like they just don't have a squad that they've had in seasons prior and like I wasn't impressed by their win on Monday night really um I also wasn't impressed by Texas A&M this weekend they're sitting at six Oklahoma I'm all I mean I don't know Notre Dame I think could be higher on this list and then I think that Florida being one spot over Utah after beating them at 12 and 13 is kind of ridiculous like Florida wasn't ranked last week and Utah was sitting at seven and yeah, it was a good win for Florida and their new quarterbacks. Awesome. Like they have a new head coach and we'll see how that goes, but it's just like, I don't know if someone went from being not ranked in something and then hopped to 12, just over the team they beat weird to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Arkansas, I think is going to be a lot better than 16 NC state. I still think is also kind of weirdly ranked at 18 because they almost blew it last weekend. Um, And I think Tennessee sitting at 24 is kind of cool. Like shaking up the SEC, a lot of people are like really high on them this season. So I think it's cool to see them back in the AP poll. A couple NFL things, Rams, Bills tonight. Sarah, are you going to watch Thursday Night Football or are you chilling? Uh, I probably will have it on in the background. I have schoolwork, but... (laughs) Uh, I forgot you're back in school again. (laughs) Wow. Um, I'm also going to be watching, I'm taking the bill, the line for this game has kind of shifted a lot. I think that the bills, 
are now favored in the game, even though they weren't originally. And there was like a bunch of talk this morning on like shows about like the Vegas lines and stuff. I haven't even looked at them, to be honest. I probably should, (laughs) but I'm excited for the game tonight. Football is back. This is real football. It's no longer preseason. And I think this is a really cool way to open the season up, especially because this could be like a Super Bowl situation for us later Mm -hmm. in February. Um, I have a question for you. So Lamar Jackson is looking for a new contract, especially after there's been like Deshaun's contract and Kyler Murray's contract and stuff like that with a ton of guaranteed money. But the interesting thing about it is that he doesn't have an agent. He's doing everything himself. And the season obviously is starting and he kind of gave them an ultimatum that like, if the contract's not done by tomorrow, I'm not going to sign one and I'll maybe test the waters after the season's over or something like that. I want to know what you think, like, as far as like professional sports go, because like, it's kind of all the same as far as like, like contracts aren't the same. And obviously other like different leagues make more money and stuff like that. But having an agent, I think is just kind of beneficial across the board, no matter what sport you play. Do you think that like agents are necessary? Do you think that this could be good for Lamar Jackson? Like, do you think that if he had an agent, he might have a deal by now? I, I like the idea. Like, I think that's really cool that he's doing that. And I think if it works out in his favor, it's very much like a good case of self-advocacy and like, yeah. but there's just so much that I feel like can go wrong in that situation to not have someone that's like an expert in this specifically an expert in like the legal legalities of it all and stuff because mm-hmm. I just feel like it's a very easy way to get screwed over yeah and I don't totally. know I think it's just yeah. on too much of a big scale like I hope to god that it works out for him so that would be an awesome thing but I do think in this sense especially when you're dealing with NFL money and you're freaking Lamar Jackson like you need to yeah as like a buffer there yeah and it's like I don't know. I don't know if it's come out as to why he doesn't. I don't know if it's like a self-advocacy thing or he wants to keep like whatever the money would be for a fee or whatever. But it's like, at what? I mean, I'm very pro agent just because like you could even have a law degree and still, you know, miss over something or like mm-hmm. you don't have it, like you don't have the availability to compare it to other clients or other contracts or something like that or the experience. And it's like, you're, you've got a football season to prepare for. Like, you don't worry about contracts and negotiations and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, we've seen some of these other guys get a ton of guaranteed money, which is what Lamar wants. And I think he deserves it. I think that he, I think he's better than Kyler Murray. I think Deshaun's situation is, I don't, I don't know. We've talked a lot about that situation, but it's like, I think the idea behind it is cool, but at what point are you making so much money that like an agent fee doesn't really matter? Yeah, that's also true. So, I mean, it's a lot of money to like the average person, but I'm sure it's like maybe like it's maybe like 12% of his contract, I would assume, or something like that, which I think is normal. But like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's interesting. interesting. Yeah, I like I really like the idea of it and I hope that it works out. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't know. I would just be too scared that I'm signing something away. Although when Kyler Murray signed his contract, And they had that like clause in there about him having to study certain amounts of like a certain amount of time every week. And yeah, that was weird. That was, he did sign it, you know? Yeah. Which is just bizarre, but the memes about him being a gamer were awesome though. (laughs) They were so funny. I hate when Barstool posts something hilarious because it's like, I want to like it and I want to retweet it. But then I see that it's Barstool and I'm like, I fucking hate you guys. Uh, I, I forget who, someone this weekend, because obviously, you know, Water Dogs, Barstool, there's a lot of overlap there. I made some comment and I was like, oh yeah, like the Water Dogs, they're my championship pick. Like that's my point bracket. Like, oh, because you're a diehard Barstool fan. I knew they were joking, but I like couldn't tell at first. I was like, no. And like, oh, I'm just kidding. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, I just like couldn't tell if that was like, cause it's not like it was someone I was like close friends with. I was like, we don't have to get into this, but no, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, we've talked about it a million times, but it really bothers me that they shit on the water dog so much. <laughs> like, I hate it. I hate it so much. Like it's, I, I know that it's just like a shtick and they do it because it pisses people off, but it's yeah. me. I'm people. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and then my only other thing I want to talk about NFL wise this week, there was a graphic put out this morning and people started to lose their minds over it. And some of the tweets were really funny, but it's the beer prices at every NFL stadium. Oh, I saw that. I want to talk about this for a second for a couple of reasons. One, of course, I'm going to DC this weekend and the commanders have $14 highest in the league beers. Like $14 for a beer is freaking insane. And it's like, this is DC. Like this isn't New York, LA. This isn't Vegas. Like why? Why? Also, you guys have so much bullshit going on in your organization right now. At least let people get hammered on the low. Yeah. Like, that's so fucked. And the Jags are number two. Okay, so the Jags are second, which is the drop-off between $14 and $11.50 being the next closest shows. I'm I'm curious to see if Commander's beers will be cheaper this weekend because of all the shit that's going on. <laughs> but it's the Jags, the 49ers, the Bucks, and the Saints. Fine. Like, they're not the biggest market teams, whatever. But the next thing is that, all right, LA's in here, Miami's in here, Buffalo, Chicago, Philly, both LA teams actually, and the Giants. But the thing is, the Jets and the Giants play in the same place, and Giants games, beers are $11, and Jets games, they're five. (laughs) Like, why why I mean I get that like Jets fans stereotypically are like the more blue collar of like the New York fandoms I'm pretty sure but like Mm -hmm. that's like do they just change the signs out like do the Patriots change the beer prices when the Revs play that is bizarre I did not realize that but five dollar beers are rad as fuck yeah that's insane I can't imagine that I saw that like freaking NLL games I cannot imagine our NFL game. Our honorary NFL teams are also $5 beers. So Falcons, five bucks. Lions, five bucks. <laughs> Love that. So Love that. I, I think that we go to both. <laughs> <laughs> I could, that's like cheaper than a bar. That is cheaper than a bar. Definitely have any bar around here. Um, the Bengals also for the people, $5 and 27 cents. Oh, I will go see Joe Burrow in a heartbeat. (laughs) Same, same, especially for $5 beers. Like, fuck it. We ball. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that really quick, mostly because of the jets and giants thing. That was like one of the big comments that was on the thread, but also the fact that I'm going to Washington this weekend and the Jags have $11 and 50 cent beer is fucking wild. Um, (laughs) So I also wanted to quickly shout out that I think Tyler and I are going to be doing a Tequila Tuesday NFL show coming up for this season. So I wanted to kind of preface that here. Um, So yeah, check that out. Hopefully, I think I'm doing the first one by myself next week and then Tyler's going to hop on because I I don't know if Tyler wants to announce it, but if he does, he can like put something here. Everyone say, woo, go Tyler. (laughs) Um, Or we'll announce it next week. I don't know. Or maybe the vlog. Um, uh, okay. So yeah. All right. PLL playoffs. You were at Gillette. Where do you want to start? Uh, we can just do a quick recap of the three games last weekend. Obviously that first one, Chrome Chaos. Brutal. Sorry. Sorry for your loss. That was a beat down. Yeah. Absolute that was beat down. So I had all three of my TVs and my computer going because college football was on. I had on my big TV, I had the Chrome game and then I mm-hmm. had college games on all my, all my like smaller screens. I changed that shit at halftime. Oh, half-time. there was no coming back after that. Like, I know like we've seen it where like teams are able to come back when you're up against playoff chaos. And so I was actually talking to Annie Towers this morning for the article I'm doing and he was like, everything like the timing is perfect for us right now he's like you saw our defense getting better he's like you're out without he's like I finally feel like missing those like 11 guys at the first four weeks even six weeks Max Adler didn't come back till later in the season injury he's like finally we're right where we need to be which is true they are peaking at the perfect time and then you have Blaze Reardon making Mm -hmm. 83 percent of saves like everything just coming together for them and I was like 
literally same thing at halftime. I was like, yeah, this game's over. <laughs> yeah halftime I freaking changed the channel but so we're obviously both thinking the same thing and it's like chaos in the playoffs I don't know what it is of, like what do you think that they just do differently in the postseason I don't because I know Josh Byrne like said he's like the regular season doesn't matter to us blah 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 and it really does like seem to be that mentality and I get with the PLL like really the seating does not matter like as long yeah. as you get in the playoffs you're not that one team out like in that sense yeah like just don't be that last team in the sense that yeah the regular season doesn't matter in that way I will never understand how it is that they're able to just like turn it I'm like I get there's like certain teams and guys that just play better with like, like the pressure and the lights on them Andy Powers did make a good point he was like they had like the Chrome had everything to lose they're the number two seed like they have this great comeback story they have all this pressure on them here's the chaos who only won two games all year and like everyone's like making jokes out of them like oh 2.8 percent like that whole thing and they just like waltz in he's like we had nothing to lose just everyone like fuck it we ball and yeah it really does. And he said the same thing this week, like with them, we'll get into it later, but like the archers, they have everything to lose too in that situation, which I think is terrible for them. Yeah. Well, so speaking of like Josh Burton saying that he doesn't think that the regular season matters. What do you think about bye weeks? Like, are you one of those people that believes that bye weeks like really hurt some teams and like are really great for others? Or do you think that like the goal should always be to have a bye? I definitely think if you're playing like for that top seed, you need some sort of reward. And I guess what else would the reward be when only one team doesn't make the playoffs anyways? Like just the yeah. way that the Which playoffs we've talked about. now. Yeah. So I think in that sense, yes, but then also because there's like, oh, like now the Whip Snakes have the, like three weeks of rest, but then like I was on Greg Gorellian's show the other day and he was like, as someone that played pro lacrosse for years, he's like, the concept of rust and like that, he's like, it's not real. Like mm. the Whip Snakes are a veteran team. They've been here a billion times before. They have more playoff experience than anyone, more playoff wins. A lot of those guys have been playing with each other since Maryland. He's like, a couple weeks of rest is not going to like throw them off their game. He's like, maybe they'll come out a little slower in the first quarter and that will give like the water dogs like a hot start because they are just kind of riding this high. He's like, but if you're a veteran team, like you're not going to play. Like, oh man, like we're rusty from that like couple weeks off. Yeah, it's true. I, I'm definitely like pro bye week just from like an injury perspective, especially because like it is the postseason. Like you've been playing all year. You're not the healthiest you've been all season. Like you're healthiest week one. And then after that, it's all mm -hmm. downhill. So it's like, I think that having like that little bit of like extra rest and recovery, a couple extra days at home in your routine, like whatever. I think that that's huge for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about for that game? Um, I think the one bright spot for the Chrome in that game was Sean Scannoni. I thought he did a great job. His defense did kind of leave him out to dry there. I thought he did a really nice job. I think he made the same amount of saves as Blaze, but he just I mean, great so season. many more shots. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, he had a great year. Like, I'm – and it might just be because, like, I'm just happy to have a team in the postseason because, like, obviously that doesn't happen for me often. But it's like – I'm, I'm happy with the progress. And I think that that's like important. Like they progress, they got better and like, they're going to keep getting better, which I think is really great. And they found some really key pieces that they can move forward with and build around. And they know that they play well together. They at least made a postseason. I mean, not that like, it's hard to make the postseason in the PLL. We've talked about this, but it's like, you guys have some experience now. And that's huge. Like I'm, that's I'm the other thing. more they're than so young so young like so young like I'm so they I mean they had yeah their their rookies this year had a year but it's like yeah. I, I'm good I'm good yeah they have nothing to hold their heads down for I think agree um archers woods fuck it I swear to God, you and me were, because I think everyone I talked to is like, yeah, the Redwoods are going to pull off the upset mm -hmm. here. Like, mm -hmm. and obviously 
said so many times the archers have the best offense when they're like coming out firing when everything's real they have so many guys that are good on ball good off ball like they're so fucking good but i don't know it just really seemed like the redwoods were kind of street at the right time but yeah no i was just gonna say I think, oh, it's not St. Laurent, like said, he's like, that game was just kind of an embodiment of our season. And they have so many free agents this upcoming off season that that team's going to look so different next year. Yeah. So what I was going to ask you is, do you think that this season was underwhelming or a disappointment from the roster that they had going into the season? It's tough to say because I feel like the Redwoods are one of those teams that have such high expectations. Like they're coming in as like title, like favorites year in and year out. But then you have that one and four start and it just feels like they were never able to completely get to where they wanted to be. There were so many streaks where it looked like they were there. You know, I think Rob Pinnell really like how he elevated his game even more so is like still astounding when you're already playing at such a high level, you know, like. Charlie Bertrand had this breakout season. Like, I just think they had a lot of like little things that turned into like, oh, like we can look back and like hold our heads high at this. But then also it's weird because I feel like they were a team in the past that were so midfield dependent. And then like, now you do. It was a very good mesh, I thought, of their midfield intact, but it just like something wasn't connecting that needed to be connecting. And then just having Eddie Glazner out, I think was another big, big blow. Cause not only is their best defender, one of their best defenders, he's also such an important leader that against an Archers team like that, where I thought that was the like most complete and like best team effort out of that Archers team, Archers like we've seen all season. How would you be able to beat them at that point? Yeah, I I do think that this season's kind of a disappointing season for the Redwoods, though. You know, like if you talk about coming in as favorites and you have a first round exit, you failed to get hot at really any point in the season until the last couple of weeks or so. You have this roster. It's the last time you're going to have all of these people together. And I've talked about it before. For me, the thing that the Redwoods stood out offensively was their two point scoring. And I feel like they failed to really get that going at any point this season for like an extended period of time either. And it's like, I think I, I, yeah, I, I would say I am disappointed. Yeah. I definitely would not say that's probably a season they're going to look back on and be like, Oh, that was great. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited to see what their team looks like next year. Maybe some people will move around, shake things up a little bit. Like that would be fun. Cause you and I were texting yesterday talking about how it feels as though whips chaos is just inevitable (laughs) but like it's true it's true and it's like if those guys can kind of I, I don't want them to break up by any means because I think that they you know can mesh and gel in like the right situations but it's like if that shook up the league that would be fucking exciting yeah I still have water dogs win it all so fucking slay All right, well, let's talk about him. This was the upset that I kind of, I, this was kind of nuts. I was having so much fun watching this fucking game. (laughs) See, I wouldn't think that you would say that just because I feel like you're two, like, unbiased favorites <laughs> are well, like I have I'm like oh I love both these teams gonna be sad as that game progressed like record here hopefully no one's uh listening that's gonna get mad at me for saying this as that game progressing I was like oh I am such a water dog fan. yeah yeah which you know because we're big stoolies <laughs> But that made that really. comment to me. I was like, because again, it's not someone I'm like good friends with. So I was like, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. And like, I think you tell that I was like really awkward. He's like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. I was like, okay. Yeah. Just don't ever say that again. Like, don't put that in the air, please. <laughs> Sarah, big barstool gal. <laughs> yeah, like, um, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't look at the lines for this game and I wish that I had, and I wish that I could look at them right now, but the Atlas were favored by like a goal and a half. 
Pretend- yeah, they were favored because I, I did one of my betting articles on this game. And I was like, fuck you guys for giving me that. I was like, this one gives the biggest coin toss, but the Atlas were favored. Yeah. And it's like, the thing that I think that sets the Atlas apart in this matchup in particular was like, they have the ability, the water dogs are just such a like, get it done team to me. Whereas the Atlas like are, they play beautiful lacrosse and it's like, they just get the job done. But like the water dogs, I was really impressed by how cohesive they were able to be. And if you put up 19 on the Atlas, that's fucking incredible. See, I agree with you. I went on like a 10 minute tangent about how much I love like the water dogs roster the other day. I was like, they have, I think the most versatile roster on like looking at your attack. It's very much pick your poison. Like they're without Ryan Brown and you would like, it doesn't even matter that they're without the guy never know the focal it. point of their attack last year. You know, Kieran McCardle, there's been so much talk about him now that, like, he probably should have been an MVP um, finalist. But regardless, like, yeah, like, he can be a shooter. Like, he's kind of like Rob Pinnell. He's a shooter. He's a feeder. He can do it all. Michael Sowers from the X, like, he could. It's not like he's just this, like, dodging threat from the X. Like, he's anywhere. You can run out of the box and he's a threat. So those two alone, defenses are going to focus on. But then you have guys like Ethan Walker who steps up, like Ryan Conrad. I, like, no, he's not someone anyone was really talking about. He stepped up big time. Like, you were just getting production everywhere offensively. Like, midfielder, I think Connor Kelly is another one who's very much under the radar. Like, he's having, I thought, like, midfielder of the year type of success. I do have Zach Courier, obviously. Wait, it wasn't supposed to. Actually, no. By the time this episode comes out, I'm, I'm not supposed to say who my uh, award choices were, but those are announced tomorrow, so it's okay. I voted Zach Courier for midfielder of the year because he's the best two-way player. That's the other thing. Yeah. With their midfield, like, it's not like, yeah, Zach Courier is the best two-way player in the league. Their entire midfield, I think, can play both ways. Like, yeah, like, you probably don't want to see Mikey Schlosser get caught on defense, but for the most part, like, I think they're the most competent in that, like, you're not worried if one of your more d midi guys is ending up on offense. Like, they're yeah. so versatile. That was kind of my point as far as being so cohesive is it's like, I feel like they all play so differently and they are like a Swiss army knife when they're all together. But it's like the fact that they're all so different and you would, unless you follow the team like really well, like you wouldn't know that. Like you wouldn't know that. Like they can make anything work because of how different and how versatile their talent is it's just the way that they all worked together last weekend to get a result and put that many points up on a team that was favored by so many people from the start of the season and I think that that kind of goes back to my other question that I asked you about the woods is it's like okay the atlas have been so favored by so many are you disappointed in that season yes (laughs) okay yes why because last year, yeah, they came in, they were looking at like these, all right, we're in this rebuild. I feel like last year's Atlas is kind of like where the Chrome were at this year. That's how I kind of like viewed them as like, they were kind of unexpected all of a sudden. They're like, oh, like they could make this title run. Then you go, like you have the same roster, like you still have Jeff T, you have Eric Law, you have Trevor Baptiste, who's the best face-off guy, like Jack and Cannon's having an amazing season. And then you had Chris Gray, who's the number one college player for the last four years. And he's in the mix, like, yeah, you're one of the title contenders. Like everyone's like, if anyone's going to beat the whip snakes, it's the Atlas. Like they're built for this. I think they have a great defense, like Tucker Durkin, all those guys. I think everything about their roster is like, yeah, this is the championship team. And then you have that first round exit. It's just not, not a good look. Yeah. All right. So a couple of the things we want to talk about from the Boston weekend. You have Andy Towers and his Gronkowski jersey in our notes. Yes. His outfits have been epic the last couple of weeks. On point. He's just kind of an epic human. He is. Amazing human. We stand always in Gronk quota, like, as you should. And speaking of Gronk, you also have the Camille Caustic was at the games, which I saw on PLL social. She's just such an icon. I love her. I am obs- literally I was like walking I forget where I, I was walking somewhere in the concourse I saw her and I was like there's no way like whatever I don't know I just like what if I know she did play lacrosse growing up but it's just not somewhere I expect her to be then sure enough like five minutes later I feel I was like oh shit that was her <laughs> I wish 
that we had gotten a photo of Camille and Andy together because I don't think there would ever be anything to sum up like our fascinations. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that would just, that would have to be like our new Twitter banner. Yeah, literally. I would have died if that happened. Just, I feel like Andy Towers gives Gronkowski energy. He does. That's, that's why I was so perfect that that's the jersey he wore. Like, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Um, DC preview. I will be in DC this weekend, but I will not be at these games because I will be at the Jags game. But we have whip snakes, water dogs first. Sarah, I feel like this is obviously the tougher game to call for me just because one, we're unbiased and stoolies. And two, because the whip snakes are just like a monster. Yeah, I'm so- Obviously, since I had the water dogs and winning my bracket, I'm just taking the water dogs. I'm going with the whips, unfortunately. I I just, I can't not. Yeah. Fair. Very fair. They're, they're just so scary. They've been scary. They There hasn't even been a flash this season of them even really not being in a championship game again. There really hasn't for me. Their one loss, though, to the water dogs. <laughs> that's true I forgot about that actually that's a good point so um what do you think the score of this game is gonna be I'm gonna say so the first time those two played each other in the regular season is 12 to 11 in overtime the whip snakes won second time it was 11 10 water dogs in regulation I'm gonna go I think it's gonna be the first score again 12 to 11 but water dogs okay I like it um archers chaos i'm taking the chaos i'm i i think it's chaos whips once again here we are shoot me don't care <laughs> i'm just going to archers because at this point i'm like i picked against chaos last week and that seems they're like if you pick against us just keep picking against us and i hope to god for the archers sake that this is the year they get over the playoff hump because they have been eliminated now twice by the chaos so <laughs> Andy, she hates you. I love you more, obviously. I told him on the call this way. I was like, I won't pick you because I didn't pick them last weekend. That's awesome. I love that. Um, we mentioned the end of year awards are being announced tomorrow. Anything you want to note? Uh, no, that just that's the end of year awards for tomorrow. I don't know who the winners are. I just know I accidentally said my midfielder of the year pick was that carrier, but that's not really a okay. hot take. All right, cool. Um, and then you have an NLL note before we close things out. Um, yeah, fuck this. The Warriors signed Chase Scanlon. Fuck Chase Scanlon. Fuck the Vancouver Warriors. Fuck their front office. I don't know. That's all I have to say. Okay, perfect. Can we get a why? Because <laughs> uh, Chase Scanlon's a piece of shit. He went to Syracuse. I don't know who he is. Um, oh, so he went to Syracuse. He was... Con- uh sorry allegedly convicted uh, whatever the fucking terminology is um domestic abuse like this girl like his girlfriend at the time he beat her he got kicked out so you're Syracuse whatever whole big thing did not want to comply with all the stuff like but like it's not like he faced jail time they gave him so many opportunities to redeem himself he like skipped out on everything that was required of him to do whatever and then he went and got a fucking DUI that was last year, two years ago, didn't comply with all the stuff following the DUI. And now somehow he's been playing in um, the WLA and now the Warriors who are run by piece of shit. I don't feel bad saying that. Um, I'm not, I don't work for the NLL, it doesn't matter. Run by piece of shit. Don't give a fuck about any of that. Didn't even make a statement about the fact that they signed Chase Scanlon. And of course, all the replies are like, what the literal fuck? They do not acknowledge it in any way, have not said anything about it. And yeah, I think that they're a piece of shit. I hope they lose every game this season. And Me too. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Perfect. Yeah. Fuck that guy and fuck them. <laughs> that was well put. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know who he was, but yeah, fuck that guy. Um, as we close things out, obviously we have a joint pop culture segment just because it is the only thing that I can think about right now. And I texted Sarah and I didn't want to talk about it before the show because I didn't want to know your thoughts going into this because I don't want it to sway me. 
did Harry spit on Chris Pine? And if you don't know what happened, allegedly the other night at this like film festival thing, there's like a video of it. You can go look it up. People are saying that, well, the internet's kind of divided, sort of, not really. Like, I feel like everyone's basically pro Harry and then like a few people are not. But there's, it, it looks, it looks like he spit on Chris Pine. It re- I mean, it does. It does look like it. And I know last night, did you see what he said at, because uh, he played a concert last night, obviously at Madison Square Garden. It was like, oh, sorry, I took a few days off. I like went on out to Venice to spit on Chris Pine, but we're back. <laughs> oh, I think that's no. hilarious. So I, that's like, good. Honestly, it doesn't even matter if you spit on him. I'm like, he doesn't give a fuck. Chris Pine's like agent or something. He's like, that didn't happen. Blah, blah, blah. I saw that. I was going to say it happened. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And honestly, I tweeted about it. Oops, my alarm's going off. Um, I tweeted about it and I was like, I would love if Harry Styles spit on me and I would probably say another sir please (laughs) like for real and I think like 99% of women would yeah I was like I don't don't see the issue in this yeah everything about I I did put everything pertaining to this don't worry darling premiere was just a shit show and I thought that was just like icing on top of the cake yeah I I have kept up with it but like honestly if I were Chris Pine I would have just been like can you at least like make it in my mouth next time like thanks <laughs> like I don't know I'm just like but poor Chris Pine he looked miserable that entire time I don't he, blame him but he did okay so let's talk about this drama for a second because I really didn't keep up with anything outside of the Harry stuff until you started talking about the floor is it Poe is it Florence Poe what is it I think so yeah okay So I saw that like there's all this drama between her and Olivia Wilde because she's friends with Jason Stakis and blah, blah, blah. But I saw her skip like Olivia Wilde's something to like go drinking. She skipped um, the the press conference. That's what it was. Like, you know, when they, all those memes of Chris Pine looking like completely zoned out, whatever. Mm -hmm. She was like, Olivia said, oh, like Florence is filming for Dune too. Like she couldn't make it. And then Florence was, because, the press conference obviously was in Venice like minutes later post her walking with an Aperol spritz through the streets of Venice just enjoying her day and then like I don't know if you saw Florence's stylist because I think we talked about how that video of Olivia Wilde came out and how she sent something to Shia LaBeouf to call her like Miss Flo like degrading her and yeah stuff. I saw that and the stylist was wearing a shirt that said Miss Flo on it <laughs> that's awesome like there is I like I'm going to see this movie just because I like all of those people in it I'm so excited to hear like years from now what actually went down on this set <laughs> I'm gonna go watch it just because I heard that Harry's acting is so bad and I kind of want to see it it looks <laughs> from those excerpts that I've seen like on Twitter and stuff and obviously Florence is one of like the best actresses right now so it is tough to go up against someone like that I'll just say Harry's not a good actor <laughs> no and that's no. okay that's okay it, it's yeah like he got nobody's perfect why would he not take it that's on the director it's true um anything else tea party I have two things I want to talk about one did you see that Tom Brady and Giselle might be getting a divorce no yeah so this has been kind of talked about so like I think that we talked about on our show how Tom went to the Bahamas or something Mm -hmm. like in like skip training camp so it came out that like Giselle took a plane from wherever they were to go to another island because they got in like a huge fight while they were there and now everyone's saying that they're like getting a divorce because Tom's playing another season and not like spending time with his family interesting See, I feel like Tom's one of those people that like holds himself to like, like he's a politician, like a president or mm-hmm. something that will never get divorced solely because of how it make him look. Yeah, agree. Although he does have a child out of wedlock. Yeah, but that was from like years ago now. Like now he's like, oh, Tom Brady, like this golden, golden yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, but like, I mean- if she if that's what she wants like hey I mean yeah so she makes more money than him so (laughs) it's true um my other tea party segment which is kind of funny that it's tea party but it's not funny (laughs) (laughs) apparently the queen is like dying yeah I'm like has there been confirmation like has she actually croaked or no 
Do we know? No, she hasn't. But like part of me, okay, this is like me being a conspiracy theorist because I am. I feel like she might have already died. And I feel like the like press just doesn't want to release it yet or they're like planning or like whatever. But I feel like they always announce shit like weeks after it happens. I feel like she's got to be dead. Like I haven't seen any of the royal people anywhere. Nobody's spoken. Remember months ago when she had COVID, I was like, no, like she's dead. She's dead. And it just like kind of went away. I really thought she was just dead then. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's got like, at least then there was like a photo of her in the car or something, right? Yeah. Or I don't even know. I never know. Because the royal family, like, they're like, we like talk about the Kardashians, like, oh, Kris Jenner, like she, royal family, like they have everyone, like people we don't even know are high up working for them. So I'm like, I don't know, believe anything that comes out of that. They're fucked up, like fucked yeah. up. I saw a tweet that was like, especially with all that shit with Andrew, but I saw a tweet that was like, can you Americans like stop making jokes? Like this isn't like the president dying. Like this is like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm gonna make jokes. They're kind of assholes. Like the queen's piece of shit. Her kids are piece of shit. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. So and that's how I feel about that. <laughs> like, I mean, it sucks that like someone's gonna die, but like she's kind of shitty. <laughs> of everything about the like... royal family, stuck. Yeah, yeah. Fuck the royal family. You heard it here first. Come for me, bitches. Um. <laughs> All right. Do you have any tweets of the week? I do not. Okay. I only have one. Actually, I do want to comment though. Did you see Big John was hitting on me yesterday? Yeah, I replied. I said betrayed. Doesn't even get to describe it. I didn't even see that. Fuck. I'm I'm turning into you. I'm not checking notifications. I'm not te- checking Snapchats. <laughs> I'm not checking text messages. I've been so fucking busy the last week. I have, I literally think that my phone looks like Sarah Griffin's phone right now. Oh, I was texting someone the other day and at first you were just Snapchatting, whatever. And then he was like, oh, like, I just prefer texting. I was like, yeah, me too. He's like, I was like, oh, my exact words. Oh yeah, I'm more of a texting girl. He goes, I think you're more of an in-person girl. Like, yeah. Valid. Yeah. Valid. <laughs> um, oh, my other hero today, my meeting was canceled at 3.30. Boom. <laughs> so Ooh. I can actually pack because I haven't <laughs> all I did I did a load of laundry this morning and that's the first I've thought about it <laughs> anyways my tweet this week I tweeted asking people to talk me out of buying a hot pink couch because I found a hot pink couch and I mm-hmm. really want it and someone responds and they go it's the same color of the inside of a cat aka pussy is what I'm assuming this guy's alluding to yeah and he goes if you spill yeah. something on it it's now a wet cat also, if you really like fish, then it's okay. Especially if you're a fan of what color the fish are on the inside when you cut them open. Hopefully that helps. Whomst? Hello? What? Ew. What? Ew. Like, how did I tweet about getting a pink couch and now you're talking to me about pussy? I hate men. I hate men. I hate hate. them. Like I, the older I get, the gayer I get. I swear to God. (laughs) I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I will die on that hill. The older I get, the gayer I get. So that's my tweet of the week. That's it. (laughs) Um, I don't have any closing thoughts to you. Nope. I don't have any. (laughs) All right, keep on sipping, y'all. Thanks for listening. We will see you next week. Happy NFL week one. Go Jags.